It's martini time. Shaken, not stirred. And let's make it a double. You are Locked On Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker. We are lifelong Cincinnati Reds fans that have turned an addiction to this team and to information for you. I want to thank you for making Locked On Reds part of your day on this, this off day, the day after opening day uh we encourage you to make sure that you subscribe because we're going to be with you every single day throughout the season because we are part of the locked on podcast network your team every day on today's podcast we have so much to get to because the vibes created by this team on opening day are the most immaculate and we're and we're coming off in an off season where all of the hype building up around this team was the most immaculate hype that i've ever seen and it felt like they delivered we're going to get into that we're going to get into the interesting lineup that David Bell had on opening day. There was one key thing that he had been telling us all spring training that he didn't do. And we are going to preview what that lineup might look like Saturday against the lefty. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Reds podcast. We will get into the opening day first and foremost before we jump into our analysis of the things. It was such a great day. Had such a blast getting to meet so many great people. I mean, there was there was Harrison, there was Steve, there was I mean other, other Steve. Steve. There was another Steve. Um, there there was Seth. There were so many people. I mean, I'm trying to remember all the names, but thank you all so much for coming up and saying, "Hey, seriously, if you see us at a game, we are more than happy to stop and talk with you." Absolutely. I mean, I mean it's just great getting to talk Reds and and anybody but my wife listening. And yeah, right. <laughs> she's happy that I, that other people are listening. No, it was change. it was amazing to kind of feel the love wandering around uh, at the banks yesterday. Um, you know, we we went to our traditional post up spot to start things, and the second we stepped out of the door into the crowd we started seeing people, people started coming up and talking baseball with us. And that, that just made my whole day. I think the way that opening day went from the weather to the way the game turned out to the energy from the fans, the the energy down at the banks and even over at smoke justice, when we went over there, um, all of that energy, it all culminated in, in the feeling that we all needed. Uh, you know, I'm not going to lie. It was hard to to stay optimistic and not be a wet blanket after right. the suspensions and the injuries and try and, and be objective in looking at what this team could still be and what it could still do, especially against a right-handed pitcher. It was really hard to do that. And the way that this team came out and performed, the way that this lineup came out and played, it was the perfect beginning to this season of expectation. And I, I couldn't be happier with how yesterday turned out from our interactions to our experience in the stadium, just as fans yeah. to uh, this Cincinnati Reds team that we love to cover. Not going to lie. It started when we went to the donut shop and they had fresh apple oh, fritters. Man. I knew it was going to be a good day. Gonna be a I knew good it was going to be a good day, uh, but no, it was a very good day. If you're Nick Martini, two home runs, first time since Adam Dunn did that on opening day twice in his career as a Cincinnati Red last time being in 2007. And it was funny because that, that was the sticking point for a lot of folks. And we're going to get into the lineup, you know, more in depth here coming up in a few minutes. But that was the sticking point for a lot of people when they saw the lineup. They're like, Nick Martini is starting? And boy, did he prove everybody wrong that was complaining about that because he didn't just get you know, we always talk about those great American ballpark home runs, right? That they hit a, a fly ball up into the ether and it floats into the first row of stands there. And it's like, that was a home run? No, he about hit it out of the ballpark both times. Yeah, that was a tank shot, especially the first one. It was three quarters of the way up the moon deck. Oh my it gosh. was there was a no doubter at that first one. The second one, more of a line drive, but also not a gimme. I mean, you yeah. could tell that that was leaving the yard, but that first one uh, was like uh, something you would expect to see uh, Ellie De La Cruz put yep. up in the stands. Or CES. Not, or not what you were like looking that. for from Nick Martini, but, you know, Nick Martini, uh, you know, one game a career does not make. No, no. But in Cincinnati, if you can perform like that on an opening day, he has cemented himself as a trivia question yep. forever now. He's going to be one of those guys that we talk about, like Adam Dunn, where do you remember that 2024 opening day? You yeah. know, Nick Martini. The Martini And, and I think I think Chris Welsh on the broadcast last night was, it was just perfect. He was like, it's exactly 5 p.m. It's happy hour, <laughs> you know? I'm resisting him. No, no, shake it, not stir. Um, okay, that I had to get that out. Uh, but no, that was just, I think that he underscores the 
depth of this lineup. And I know there's going to be some folks say, oh, my gosh, you said depth again. You said it so many times this year. But it just goes to show you that they are able to score runs in a lot of different ways. The fact that he was able to get five RBIs, he is not a guy. I wasn't putting prop bets on him. You weren't putting prop bets on him. We weren't going to prize picks and hitting more on Nick Martini because we were just staying away from that. It was CES. It was Ellie. You know, it was, it was Jonathan India. So those were guys that were on base, but they weren't the catalysts for the way that the Reds were able to score. But it was all set up by, I, honestly, other than Emilio Pagan giving up the bomb, the most perfect way that you could set up a pitching day for this Reds team. Uh, it, it was it was excellent, and we're going to spend a lot of time today talking about Frankie Montas and what he what he did out there on the mound. Uh, I saw the questions coming last night immediately after David Bell pulled Montas. People, here we go again, David Bell. Why is he not leaving him out there, guys? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> we're going to spend a lot of time talking about Frankie Montas. It was opening day. This is a pitcher coming off of major shoulder injury that managed just an inning and a third last year. Yeah. I was completely in agreement with David Bell removing Montas from the game when he did and getting into this bullpen that they paid big bucks for uh, to come out and do its thing. And and yeah, Pagan was probably the only sour note on a day where there weren't very many right. sour notes. Uh, but even at that, he's going to be fine. I kind of in the camp that Emilio Pagan just wasn't quite ready. Um, he started later than the other yes. pitchers. And I think that just the nature of the scheduling of this, he didn't have quite enough time, and I think he's going to be just fine. And I think the 7 nothing lead played into that because I think had it been a closer game, I don't know that we would have seen him. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it being 7 nothing, David Bell was – work. Yeah, he was, he was just like, let's, let's get him in, let's get him rolling. Come on. And, and I kind of thought, and you had said it at the moment while we're in the game, that even Alexis Diaz would get some work. Mm -hmm. He didn't. Shout out to Charlie Goldsmith. He called a perfectly Brent Suter to scoreless innings. And Charlie nailed it. Worked. He was the only one to get a, a prediction right. Yeah. David Bell didn't get tossed. I was I was ready for it. It yeah. didn't happen. Charlie, Charlie nailed it. Shout out to Charlie Goldsmith, Cincinnati Inquirer. We've lost our logo behind us, but that's okay. We keep rolling. Um, no, that that was a fantastic day. And I, I saw and I apologize. I forget who it was that tweeted it, but it was a perfect tweet in that if Andrew Rabbit and Brent Suter one day combine for a shutout, that game might take 45 minutes because of how fast Brent Suter pitches, because of how fast Andrew Rabbit pitches. But that that was fantastic. And and Montas was super efficient with his pitches. That's what we have wanted. That's what we wanted all year long from any starting pitcher on the mound from the Reds was just be efficient. And I was, I was glad that, that David Bell didn't force the issue mm -hmm. on that. And I, I get health. I get, you know, all these different reasons as to why he took him out. But honestly, this bullpen is just too good. Years past when the Reds had good starting pitching, like you think back to like 2021 when they had Malley and Castillo and all those guys, uh, it, it was like, okay, please leave them on the mound because we don't want to see anybody from this bullpen. But now it feels like if the starting rotation can rise to meet where the bullpen currently is, David Bell doesn't have to run anybody out of gas mm -hmm. the way that he has had to these last here's few years. A, here's so. a couple from the comment section here. Nick Mormon checks in and says he thought that Montas' velocity was great, yes. all things considered. I did too. Uh, I thought he looked like he belonged. He looked like an opening day starter. Yep. I had absolutely no problem with that at all. Shredder checks in and says the removal of Montas was perfect timing. He was starting to miss on some spots and was laboring a bit in the fifth. And and I agree. Yeah. Uh, there was there's no point in game one of 162 trying to push a couple extra pitches out of Frankie Montas on right. that shoulder. I, I I could not agree more with how David Bell, God help us, am I saying this out loud? <laughs> I could not agree more with how David Bell handled the pitching yesterday. Yeah. It, outside of um, which we'll get into in here in just a moment, uh, outside of the lineup, I thought he had a perfect day and you can't really even complain about the lineup. I just thought the lineup was interesting and I want to get into why coming up next. Before we get into all that, let's shout out the sponsor of today's podcast. That is FanDuel. And Jeff, while I'm doing this FanDuel read, fix our logo. Yeah. Do that. <laughs> Say goodbye to Busted yeah. Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. The tournament action continues. And whether you're betting on a big upset or the number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets back if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200 for you to use 
on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. There are also some player futures you can check out. It might be too late to jump in on the futures, but I will tell you, you can get in on plenty of over-unders. You can get in on money lines. You can get in on the Reds to win Saturday at Great American Ballpark against a left-handed pitcher. That's going to be an interesting conversation. That is for sure. Uh, make sure you head over to FanDuel to get in on the action. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and you can bet on any of the college hoops or Major League Baseball and uh, your $5 winning bet is going to get you $200 in bonus bets back. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. You can keep in on the action until they cut down the nets. Take it away. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us here today. And by the way, uh, do you have your TV tuned to Fox Sports or? ESPN. Are you tired of all the shouting? Well, look no further than Locked On Sports Today. Locked On Sports Today has a 24-7 stream on YouTube and on the Amazon Fire TV channels app that will give you all of your sports talk, whether it be the biggest stories from the local takes like myself and Steve or our national shows that cover every league. Check out Locked On Sports Today on the Amazon Fire TV channels app or on YouTube 24-7. Make sure you subscribe today. And coming up next week, we will continue our another. We're, we're going to wrap up the national series. Hopefully, we talk about two out of three. And we will get you set for the first road series of the season as the Reds head to Philadelphia for three before coming back to Great American Ballpark for some. You know, give the Phillies a nice little home opener there. But hopefully, we won't uh, crush their dreams too much too quickly. Uh, but we'll get into that later on next week. Now, so, before we jump into the lineup, yeah. I, I do want to comment on something that's come across. And you and I talked about this at the game. Uh, Michael checks in and says, sorry to see Senzel got hurt. Oh, gosh. Any regrets he's gone given the injuries? A uh, No. And is there ever been a person more cursed at Great American Ballpark? Than, How on than Anything brand. involving the Cincinnati Reds? I, I got a text. We were walking into the stadium. We were, we were getting to our seats, you know, getting situated. And I got a text from our Lockdown Nationals guy. And he was just like, Apparently, Nick Sinzo broke his thumb because he's out. And I'm like, wait, no, wait, wait, no, 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 no. What? What? Seriously? He he hates this stadium. Like, I mean, he doesn't hate it, but you talk about bad luck no for doubt. a guy. Oh, my God. Sinzel going to Sinzel. What are you going to do? You know, I don't like to see anybody get hurt. No. And I was and, you know, when we did our crossover with Ryan, I, I was talking about Sinzo being really, I thought, a potential all star in. Yeah. Washington, given the way that team is set up, if Senzel can, he's got to change his scenery, change yeah. for a bounce um, back. And, yeah. Wow, <laughs> you can take the you can take the Senzel out of Cincinnati, right? But you can't, can't take the <laughs> Senzel out of Senzel uh, or something. Do I don't it's know how like that goes. That. Anyway, uh, so lineup wise for the Reds, uh, we were super surprised whenever David Bell announced it because all spring training long we heard ellie second ellie second ellie second ellie's gonna start short he's gonna play second in fact he said or he's gonna hit can, second don't read into my lineup except for except that. for ellie de la cruz back and apparently second. we you shouldn't have read, read into anything. Shouldn't, read into anything shouldn't read anything he says oh i tell you sometimes david bell and the things that he says i thought he was being candid for once anyway he hit Not sixth <laughs> he hit sixth and i thought he had a good day you know a single he had uh, a, a great walk that he worked, a very deep count. He was working deep in the counts. Didn't really look like there were any, you know, at bats where he just gave it away. Not that he gives away at bats, but, you know, he strikes out quickly or something like that. There was none of those. I know he did have the one strikeout, but overall, a pretty good day for him. You had Spencer Steer betting seventh, which insert Michael Jordan meme here. And he took that personally because he had a big day. Hey, if not for martini if we weren't talking about two martini bombs yeah martini shots martini doubles martini, i don't know yeah. if we weren't talking about martini we'd be talking about spencer steer being the player of the game martini because he tanks. came up in two martini yeah. <laughs> martini got tanked i don't know <laughs> we would be talking about spencer steer and and him being the player of the game because in two situations he come up and delivers big with rbis so you know if that's your number seven guy mm -hmm. if that's what we're going to get for production from the seventh spot in the lineup Against right-handed pitchers, this team, like we've been saying, this team is going to be fine against right-handed pitchers. And they had the most hilarious, and I forget which inning it was. I, th I think it was like the sixth or the seventh, but the most hilarious double steal that I've ever seen because there was no throw. Ellie stole third, and Spencer Steer stole second. 
and the catcher like popped up the throw and he saw that Ellie was already in third and he's like, all right, well, what's the point in throwing? I'm just going to make an error and he's going to score that I, I never saw. And I, and they gave him a steal, but I've never seen a double steal that you could argue was almost catcher's indifference. Like they just let him have it. Like that was something I thought all game long. I felt like the base running and, and, and the guys that could steal like early on, I mean, India let, let off uh, the Reds half of the game by walking. And I thought, okay, for sure he's going to steal because they ran all day on KB Ruiz uh, last year and they didn't do that. Maybe that's a foot thing. Maybe they're trying to ease him into the season and not like, you know, force the issue too quickly. But they could have done that so many different times if I'm nitpicking at anything, but it didn't really matter because Nick Martini was hitting homers all day and just bringing guys in. Um, but that that was such a good game from a lineup that I was I was so surprised to see. I wasn't surprised to see India leading off. Very surprised, by the way, that the best number nine hitter in baseball was not hitting number nine. And I, I think that he might have been pressing a little bit, but he still oh, he just missed that. He just missed just the home missed run. It. He just missed it. He got just under it. Watch the replay back today. He just missed that. Yeah. He's gonna be fine up there. I like him up there. Um, uh, you know, David yeah. Bell, you know, we were joking when we were uh partaking of beverage before the game and i said something along the line of uh david bell asks chat gbt to make the make <laughs> yeah, the lineup for him today and it just went left right left right left right and um i you know we made fun of it we questioned it a little bit we were puzzled by the la de la cruz stuff but at the end of the day after having the opportunity to see the outcome and look back at how no it complaints. played out i don't have any complaints mm-hmm. uh, if they can if he wants to run that lineup at least until people start getting healthy. If that's the everyday lineup against a right-handed pitcher, I can live with that. I could definitely see that being the case. I mean, the left-right, left-right thing was just so funny to me. And the, and the way that it worked out, um, we, we didn't see Jamer Candelario's best foot forward. I bet we see that at some point this weekend. He just avoided a golden sombrero. And then, you know, you, you, Jake Frehley had a pretty nice start to his season as well, lacing a double into right field and things like that. I, I, was, I was very... Very happy to see that. Outlaw Monster Hunter says the two of us in the same room feels illegal, but he likes it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that uh, it's quite a setup here. If, if we maybe we'll tweet out a picture of this because well, is, I think uh, they saw it in the reflection. Yeah, of, they might uh, have, yeah. of the, when, the, when the logo <laughs> went out. That's why I'm like, fix the logo. We're we're, we're 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 makeshift here at the car residence. Let me tell you. Oh yeah, this is not our everyday setup for sure. Um, but yeah, with that lineup, I, I really think that it's going to be interesting to see. I, I think right-handed pitching is definitely going to be the strength mm-hmm. of, of of who they can face and who they can really do damage against. My question now comes to tomorrow, mm-hmm. and we're, we're going to kind of dive into that coming up in just a moment. Before we do that, though, sorry. <clears throat> I think I got a little bit are of allergies. You, are you okay? Yeah. Uh, before we do that, though, I wanted to let everybody know that we have a revamped Locked On Reds Insiders group. I would love you to join the Locked On Reds Insiders. Become an insider today. It's just four ninety nine a month. And if you text the word insider to 513-597-0944, you'll get a free 14-day trial just to see what it's all about because I'm talking Reds with you every single day. Hoping to make you the Reds fan of your the, the guy that everybody comes to or the gal that everybody comes to for the Reds information join lockdown reds insiders by texting insider to 513-597-0944 today and also make sure you join the lockdown reds uh discord group heard a couple of people reference the discord Mm -hmm. group when we ran into them yesterday that was a lot of fun got the link in the description of today's episode uh check that out today and bookmark inside the reds.com we're writing, we're talking. There's lots of things that are and, going and on. Because we're it you happened so much long. for us yesterday, I, let's shout out a couple of things. Um, the coverage around Cincinnati from oh, the local media was just top notch yesterday. Yeah. Mo and Lance both killed it, and and both of those guys took some time on air to shout us out. Um, Austin Elmore did the same, talking about inside the Reds. Uh, you know, we got a lot of uh, publicity yesterday, yeah. free airtime very, from very those guys, and I cannot thank them a lot, enough. One of the things about this show, um, we obviously we talk to you guys all the time about how much we love talking baseball with you. 
But a lot of what we've been able to do here, a lot of what has happened, the way that this show has grown would not be possible if early on those guys had not supported us, mentored us in many cases, helped us along, helped us to reach you and, and become known. And I just, I can't thank those guys enough. Every single person we interacted with from the media yesterday was just A plus, A plus Absolutely. level. And, and the way they covered opening day, Cincinnati does it better all the way around. The media does it better. The fans do it better. The city does it better. Yeah. Just, there is nothing like opening day in Cincinnati, Ohio. All the different pictures and the videos and things like that of, like, you know, the banks and what that all looked like. I remember there was a point where we were just like, hey, let's go see what's going on at, at the Dora and all that stuff. And we're like, mm, okay, we saw it from the outside. We couldn't get in. We're going to go around We it. tried <laughs> three times to get into the Dora and it just was not happening. You know, Listen, this guy, is, this guy is not a tiny man. He, he's, yeah. he's, he's, <laughs> I was trying to plow the road and open up a spot and we weren't getting in there. No, it, it, it was, it was not that way. So it, it's going to be such a fun season, the way that they delivered on that opening day crowd. And I mean, there's so many people there and so many people that were watching on TV and listening on the radio that, you know, they're like, man, let's see how good this team is. Are they going to deliver on the hype? Are they going to start fast? That's something that I hope we continue because now the Reds move on to a lefty Patrick Corbin going to be on the mound on Saturday. And, it's interesting because he is a lefty, so there's a little bit of heartburn there. Outside of that, though, if you really look into who Patrick Corbin has been, not just last year, not just the two last two years, but the last three years, we shouldn't worry about him. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not been he's not been good. So I think this is the perfect the perfect lefty test yes. for this this lineup. That's not. I mean. It's not going to be horrible, but it's not going to be quite as good when there's a lefty on the mound for, when you look at the players that are in there. Now, here come the Stuart Fairchild people. They're going to start Fairchild, yelling yeah. at me. Here they come. But here's the thing. He, he's going to have to prove it now. Right. Um, he's going to be in the starting lineup um, tomorrow. He's going to be facing this left-handed pitcher. Yep. And now we get to see, is he a 4A guy that shows out in spring, which is my concern, Yep. which is who he's been. Norris Hopper. Yeah. Norris Hopper. Yeah. Or... Did he work on things in the offseason? Is he in the best shape of his life? Yep. Is that strength in that 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 physical health going to translate into a better baseball player in a regular season when the other team's trying to win? Do you think, and, and, and especially for this specific game, I could see this being the case where they put Stevenson at DH and Maley at catcher mm -hmm. just to, to load up on the righties because I and, and, and maybe it's that you put Espinal at second and India at DH, but I think that the lineup is a little bit stronger with Maley in it as opposed to Espinal. That could be, but at the same time, I really question the idea of of being at risk of losing your designated hitter if something go goes wrong. There's yeah. just too many opportunities for a catcher to get nicked up in a game. Um, I It was fine when there were three catchers, and I don't want three catchers. <laughs> no, I do not want three no. catchers on the roster. That's not what I'm saying. But it was okay no. when there were three catchers to have a catcher at DH. I don't necessarily think they should roll that way. I think I would much rather see them roll with Espinal and and see what he's got. Yeah. Um, I just I just wouldn't want to risk it. The uh, <laughs> the thought that I had in the back of my mind whenever they announced Bubba Thompson as the 26th man, I'm just like, and I saw a bunch of people complaining about it. I'm like, would you rather have Kirk Casale or you know? Right. I mean, what are we, I mean, I know that was not the either or situation, but I was just thinking, I'm like, man, I'm glad they're not rolling with three catchers. Yeah, and and and, and Espinal was brought in for depth as well, so they're they're not going to ignore him and just leave him on the bench and not use him. And then Bubba Thompson, I believe, is a lefty. Actually, I should have looked that up before I talked about him. But um, he, I don't think we'll see him. Unless it's a you know replacement later mm -hmm. on in the in this game, uh, Jake Friley will come in once they they go away from Patrick Corbin. Not mm -hmm. a lot of lefties in that bullpen. We didn't see any lefties on opening day from the Nationals, and I don't think I think there might be one that we would really need to worry about. So the chances are that they go from Patrick Corbin to that other lefty just to keep the Reds lineup the same and keep Fraley off there and and keep Martini off there. Um, but I think overall, this lineup is still going to be pretty solid. I mean, two of your best hitters in this lineup are switch hitters. Mm -hmm. And although Ellie struggled mightily against lefties, I expect that's going to be somewhere he takes a step forward this year. And Candelario has no splits whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And he had a bad day on opening day. He's looking to show out for the 
for the fans here in Cincinnati. He's looking to prove that he belongs. I believe he'll have a pretty good day so as well. Let me ask you this. What do you do with the outfield configuration with a left-hander on the mound? Obviously, we're going to see Steer – and yeah. Fairchild in the outfield. My question is, do you continue to roll Will Benson out to center, or do you move him back to the corner and put Fairchild in center uh, versus a left-handed pitcher? If, if you're going – this 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 may be a little bit of a hint as to the long uh, – as, as to how, how much David Bell believes there's longevity in the idea that uh, Will Benson can play every day if he plays him in center field. Because I think that, uh, obviously, against right-handed pitching, that's where he's going to play. So I don't necessarily know why you would move him away from that. I know that Fairchild has shown to this point to be a better center fielder than Will Benson, but it's just because we have a lack of information on Will Benson's side. Um, I could see it being early that he would play center field and Benson would play right field. But I think if you're trying to sell the idea that Will Benson is an everyday ball player, you're going to play him in center field. Because the alternative, if this experiment doesn't work out, the outfield configuration would have to look something like India Fairchild steer to get all of the lefties out of the lineup. And I just, and that means yeah. Espinal at second base. And, and that means Stevenson at DH. Yeah. Because you couldn't, you, you couldn't have India in the outfield and right. Espinal in the field and have another righty DH unless it's Stevenson. So the best possible outcome is that Will Benson figures it out. Um, yeah. And I'm not, I'm we not, keep a, coming I'm back not a big that. believer. <laughs> I'm not a big believer that he's going to be able to do that. I, I truly believe that if he was going to be able to hit lefties, he'd already be able to hit lefties. I don't know that he's going to pick up that skill on the fly. I'm a slightly bigger believer than you are, but yeah, I, I, I'm not saying that like, I know it's going to happen. I, I still got to see it, but we're, we'll definitely start to see. And like you mentioned, this is the perfect opportunity for him to show it against a lefty who has really not had a great couple of years. I mean, his ERA was over six last year. The only reason, and he led the nationals in innings pitch. The only reason that, um, no, Ethan, appreciate Ethan you Smith. checking out. Yeah. Ethan Smith from um, locked on pirates checking in, in the comments. Uh, yeah. Pirates got a win in 12 against those pesky Marlins. Took him a while. Yeah. Um, the only reason that uh, Patrick Corbin's still in that rotation because he's eating innings for a team that is trying to reset its pitching staff. This is his contract year. Maybe he pitches a little bit better since this is his contract year, but the last three years would tell me that that's probably not going to happen. And this is the way that Will Benson can take advantage of that. So we are live here on YouTube today. And rather than break this up for you folks, I think we're just going to keep on keeping on. We got a, a lot Q to talk a. about. Yeah. Still. We're um, celebrating, you know, vibe we haven't, sitting. Uh, we haven't even touched on Hunter Green yet. Uh, nope. We do need to talk about that. Yes, we we do. do need to take a lot of these questions and comments. We'll start it off with one that's too far back for me to go and find. And that is our reaction to the Reds signing Mike Ford to a minor league deal yesterday. I love that. To bring him in. And I think that's a great move. Yeah, that is definitely. that is the good kind of insurance you need down in Louisville in case something goes walkie. Because I would not feel bad about Mike Ford for 10 days while somebody's resting something that they tweaked. I I poo-pooed him very early on. Well, as, a, as an active member of the lineup. Yeah. Not as insurance. Right, 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 right. Uh, he's, he's much better as insurance. But... Also, like hearing about him, and there, there's other locked on hosts. Like, I remember talking with our Yankees host, Stacey Gatsoulias, and some of our Mariners guys. They have memories of Mike Ford. They didn't come out and say, Oh my gosh, that was such a great signing. You guys should have a press conference about that. But they said, He's he's kind of he's kind of one of those guys that's going to give you a memory here or there. And that's the kind of guy that you want as insurance. Somebody who's got that high upside. Like, I almost feel like I'm about to start talking like it's fantasy sports. I'm not going to go that crazy. Check out our Lockdown Fantasy Baseball guys for more of that. But even in real baseball, I think the guys that you want to be the go-betweens between Louisville to have some sort of upside. And Mike Ford has the upside of he can hit you a walk-off home run, mm -hmm. and you're not really you're, you're not going to be surprised if he does because he's got all that power. All right, let's dig into this comment section and see where we go. Uh, this from Ronnie. Ronnie thinks uh, Fairchild is going to surprise us. Hey, says well, Fairchild looks to have the it factor, is what Ronnie's saying here. <sighs> Not full blown yet, but don't be surprised. Look, I, I'm, I'm, I wish I had this kind of faith that Fairchild was going to be this dude. I, I just, I don't know where it's. Someone tell me where is this coming from? What are you seeing in Stuart Fairchild today? Here in 2024 that you didn't see in Last 2023. Yeah. I, I just I, I I don't get it. And look, I'm figuring out the genre for our apology song. I'm I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how we're gonna write it. 
but he's got to earn it. We're not going to write it before he earns it. And I mean, that'll, that, that could happen. And if it does, I will be super happy, but I just, that's a guy that I don't have the reds colored goggles on for right now. I'm glad that the reds have him, but I would have been much more happy if they had Michael a Taylor or Adam Duvall and I will maintain that position. I'm not going to go in depth on it because we've talked about this before and it's a moot point because they're both elsewhere. So, but I just say that with Stuart Fairchild, I'm expecting a replacement level player. I'm not expecting a whole lot. more. Seth checks in and says, what did we think of Indy on opening day? Seth felt like that he had some good at bats and made his plays at second base, regardless of how routine he was busy. Were. He was a busy guy. Yeah. They put him to work and, you know, I kind of made fun of it while we were sitting in the stands, <laughs> right? Like, huh? You know, his pop up city. I mean, Frankie Montas was allowing a lot of weak or forcing a lot of weak contact, and most of it seemed to be going to India. Like, I don't know if maybe he like came up and whispered in Frankie's ear, like, yo, dude, I need some balls, right? right? We need to we need to get some work in. And uh he, he he looked good. I I I was hearing as you know, we were watching the the playback this morning of it, and Barry Larkin was talking about, you know, maybe him playing those different positions in spring training gave him a different view of playing second base. And I think part of it, I think part of that's true. I think the other part of it is the fact that all spring training long, we talked about how he's not playing second and how he's not leading off because Friedel's leading off and Matt McLean's yeah. playing second. And now here he is opening day, leading, leading off, off, playing, playing second. second. Yeah. And, you know, India's on record as saying that uh, the fact that this was an abnormal spring, yeah. that he was doing all these different things really kind of helped open him up and relax him and just mm -hmm. allow him to be an athlete and go play versus hyper focus on things and you know we talk about is it a distraction is it hard for players to do this some players say that it is but you know everybody's different and india has kind of embraced this thing and i'm interested to see if they still tinker with him in the outfield like like yeah. we just talked about it'll make for kind of a wonky lineup uh but maybe that's what they do to kind of keep india in that comfort zone versus letting him get hyper focused again they're gonna have to give will benson a day off and that's going to be an interesting thing when they do that because he i mean we have talked about this many times now but he is the linchpin of this outfield and jonathan india is going to be the key to that because there's not really anybody else that I, I i don't want to see them give bubba thompson a lot of playing time um i think he was the 26th man in lieu of other options mm -hmm. um you talk about if Stuart fairchild pops off if bubba thompson does anything for this team. Like I want him to be defensive replacement slash, um, you know, pinch runner late in a game where you're, you know, maybe you're pinch running Stevenson or something like that. And you need a run. But other than that, I don't want to see him get a ton of at bats. Um, and, and I'm, I I'm looking forward to see what India can continue to do because like we said with Martini, one game does not make a season for right. India, but he heard all off season long between trade rumors and between other guys getting the job over him that he just wasn't going to play this year. And now he's got tons of opportunity to do so. All right, let's get through a couple of these. First off, uh, Robert, thanks for reminding me to say this. Uh, Robert's talking about there's hundreds of people on the stream right now. All you guys, click that like appreciate button for us. Yeah. We appreciate you being here. Click that like button. Helps get this distributed to the masses, and and that's the goal. We want to talk baseball with everybody. It's vibe City. We love it. Vibe um, City couple things here uh matthew checks in and says uh this regarding Stuart fairchild confidence in the fact that he made the opening day roster and knows the team believes that he can be better that goes a long way um uh, yeah there is a confidence he's, factor. yeah he's yeah, definitely coming I, with a lot is, of confidence that is yeah. very true uh josh checks in hey josh how you doing says that he's been saying to us that mike ford could be good insurance <laughs> he has been he was kind of in early in the the mike ford camp look i'm just glad he's back because now i have an opportunity for the Mike Ford jersey in the grab bag. Yep. This, if this all boils down to clothes that fit me, really. What that's, number was you? I can't remember, remember what number. Doesn't even matter. It's I'm trying fit. to mark it it's for It's going to fit yeah. out of the bag. That is the important part of it. Uh, I was wondering if we would get to this. Thanks, Carrie. Glad to see Ellie attempting to bunt. If he gets it, that's a six-tool kid. A six -tool, um, yeah. I, I want to tell you that I, I'm rarely for the bunt. But in that particular situation... It could have been great. Uh, Fraley ends up on third base if and Ellie the, gets that bunt down. And listening back on the broadcast, uh, they talked about that because he was up there lefty, he couldn't see the jump that Fraley got. If mm. he had been righty, he probably just takes Pulls that back. pitch because Fraley was already sliding in the second base yeah. when Ellie actually made contact with the ball. But you're right. Uh, if he has that 
If he has that tool in his bag and forces the defense to at least respect it, can you imagine having to creep in to take away the bunt and he smokes a 118 <laughs> mile an hour ball at you? Right. Um, someone could lose their life. It, it, it seems almost unfair. And that looked like what the Nationals were expecting. They were back on their heels. Mm -hmm. They were back deep into the infield. That bunt would have been a hit easily. Like unless Cabrera Ruiz makes a really good play and he is not known for his defensive skill – then, yeah, Ellie's on first, Fraley's on third, and that inning is just cooking with gas. But ended up, uh, that was the inning that they did score anyway, but that that would have been a, a pretty nice move. Ellie's got so many things he can call on. Man. He's such a weapon. Steve checks in and says, Ellie had a walk, a hit, a stolen base, and a run scored. Not a bad opening day. If, hey, that's, if that's what he does every game of the season, yeah. I'll, I'll take it. That's going to be a tremendous season. Hey, and we told you on prize picks over the the hits, runs, and or hits, RBIs, and runs plus or a one and a half more or less, and we said take more. And he got there's, a, there's a lot of Jake Fraley love going on in the comment section right now. This from Blake. Blake says Jake Fraley is a leader on this team. I agree with that yeah. wholeheartedly. Yeah. And just non baseball, how great is it that? Fraley's out there and able to play. We got an update on his yeah. daughter. His daughter has is, is been fighting the cancer. She looked well. He had her down at the ballpark yesterday. And this was something we worried about just because, I mean, nobody wants to have a person with a sick kid. And right. we worried about that. And we worried about if, if Fraley was going to be available or – was he going to need to be away from the team? And it is just so great that she's doing so well and was able to be out at the ballpark and that Fraley was able to be part of this team. Yeah, and what a what a way for him to start the season too. Like I, I feel like getting off to that good start, and, and it's a, a theme that I believe this entire team needs to take with it, is getting off to this kind of a start, expanding it from opening day to game two, game three, game four, you know, the first week, second week, all that other stuff. Imagine if this team gets going good because we were talking about it before the game with some folks at Yard House. Like, if this team just goes 500 mm -hmm. by the end of May, they're going to win the division yeah. because these first two months are such a gauntlet with all the different teams that they got up. I mean, they play Philadelphia seven times in the month of April, they go on a 10 game road or West Coast road trip in May, they play the Rangers a couple of times, like, play all these big time opponents. But if you can just get out of that 500, you're looking good. But if they come out of this over 500, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. And we're going to anger some Braves fans that probably see this. But do the Reds push for the number two seed mm -hmm. if they're over 500 by the end of May? That might be getting That's, way ahead. That might of be getting but ahead. Yeah, but, yeah. but I think you're right. If they can be 500 or better at the end of May, and we've talked about so we're blue in the face how important April is yeah. because this team is notoriously bad in April and that has to be the thing that they change. If they can do that, I, I am still all in on the Reds winning the National League Central. I, I No question in my mind. No, no question at all. Let's do this. Um, before I take the next comments, uh, we haven't really talked about Hunter Green and I want to yes. talk about Hunter Green a little bit because now we see him in this new role yep. as the number two guy, as not the face of the pitching staff as mm -hmm. not the guy that's expected to carry things. There's somebody else doing that this year. Yep. I'm interested to see how he responds. I'm hoping that he goes out there with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Yes. He goes out there and we need to see more than just the fastball. We mm -hmm. need to see these new pitches that he was using in Goodyear because for years now, since he's come to the big leagues, we've been hearing he's working on a pitch. He's working on a pitch. He's working on a pitch. And that's never made it into the regular season rotation. Right. He's not used it. He's not believed in it. He's, he's fallen back into his, I'm going to be a thrower mentality. I need him to go out there and be a pitcher. Yeah. I need him to be smart. I need him to be pitch efficient. And I need him to use these new pitches to keep the opposing team off balance. That will be the, the elevation and the evolution of Hunter Green. That's how he becomes this team's ace down the road. And this is the perfect spot for him to start doing it. And he had a template. I mean, Frankie Montas showed him how to pitch a good game. Frankie Montas didn't have a strikeout until the third inning. But that didn't bother me because of how quickly he was moving through. Just get three outs, keep the scoreboard clean. That's all you need to do as a pitcher. And as much as the, you know, like I saw our, our Lockdown Brewers host Chuck tweet out, you know, oh, Cor Corbin Burns got 11 strikeouts in six innings. I guess the Brewers didn't need that kind of pitching or pitcher on their staff. Honestly, if, if, if Hunter Green goes out and pitches six innings, and only gets like four or five strikeouts, but he keeps the scoreboard clean, then I'm going to chalk that up as a massive success for him because 
he is a guy that it feels like he is trying to go for the strikeout and he needs to add that efficiency into his game to take that next step to become the face of the pitching staff. And, and, and I think that this, this first game of the season does not come without pressure. He's got to step on that mound knowing that he cannot start slow. Last year, you remember when he started on opening day, he threw four and a third, and I think he threw 110 pitches mm-hmm. in four and a third. He can't do that nope. to begin this season. And, and, and the first couple of starts that he had last year were rough. And, you know, before he finally got into that groove, kind of felt like he dug himself into a hole. He needs to leave the shovel behind. He, mm-hmm. He's got to start fast, just like the rest of this team. But he has got to have a good outing on Saturday. And, and look, part of Montas and his efficiency was – He was taking advantage of a lineup that is a little bit unsure of itself right now in Washington where they've got some young guys coming who aren't here yet. I mean, this is basically the April version of what the Reds were last year. And the screen went off again. Um, I think we're just going to leave it at this point. But but I think this was the April April version of the 2023 Reds. Um, So there's a lot of moving parts in that lineup. So Hunter Green needs to take advantage of that on Saturday. All right, let's move into some love for the local guy coming home. Uh, we haven't talked about Brent Suter, and he had uh, – we talked about him a little bit. Just Smith. shout out to Charlie Goldsmith. But um, he looked great yesterday, and he did, he did stuff. exactly what he was brought in here to do. And you and I, we were really making fun of what was going on because he's chucking balls up there that are in the 70s and still getting people to swing and miss. And Bronson Arroyo was going, know, dude, you need He to struck out four of the six batters he yeah. faced. It was yeah. fantastic. You know, so John checked in. Says Suter is a stud. Uh, mm-hmm. Steve checks in and says Suter's three-year-old son said, "My daddy's a good baseball player." Amen to that. He is. We definitely uh, agree with him on that one, right? So what a signing! It too. was a tremendous. Just the guys that they brought in here went out and did the things that they were brought in here to do yesterday. Montas did it. Suter did it. Only Pagan struggled, and 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 I'm not by any means giving up on Pagan. No, I, I think he's, he's going to be just fine as well. He, he's going to find a groove. Brent Suter did the thing that I, I have said all offseason he can do, and that is pitch multiple innings just about effortlessly. Mm-hmm. I mean, he only threw 32 pitches. Was it 31 or 32 pitches in two innings, and he had four strikeouts. Like, when you get that many strikeouts for a relief pitcher, you kind of figure they push, you know, 40, 50 pitches because they got to work around some stuff and all that. But he was so efficient. That slider, sweeper, curveball, whatever the breaking ball was, from right field, I could tell that thing was a huge hook. Mm-hmm. The way that it was able to break into batters, they had no idea what to do with it. And that hook coming in at like 76 made the 85 mile an hour fastball look ridiculously fast. And he was locating it up in the zone. Like you think about an 85 mile an hour fastball up in the zone, you're thinking BP time. But again, we're talking about a dude that did not allow a home run in 32 innings at Coors Field last year. So we see what he's got going on, and I absolutely love it. I love the this. There's a lot of love for Suter going on in here right now, guys. I, I agree. I, I think yeah. that I, I think that he was a. Uh, you know, this is Carrie says Suter yesterday was a fairy tale. Yeah. Can you imagine having grown up here and and yeah to go out on an opening day for your team. And like, I just said, he's never been to opening day either. That was, that was the other. Yeah. It was like, Hey, first time you ever go to a reds opening day, you're playing and you rock like congrats dude. like that was such a huge gift for the reds this year. This bullpen is going to be so good. And so I will have no problems if it looks like a starter is dealing, but he's kind of getting to the point where you're like, yeah, maybe we could like, you know, pull him while he's ahead let him have you know rest on this game and really enjoy his success and build on that for his next start because we got so many guys out in the pen that we can call on. Seth says he wants to see Suter chuck a fifty mile an hour pitch up there just for the Ephes. fun of it. Yeah, I think get he could do Ephes. it. Yeah, just yeah. he could totally just do flick that. it out there. I could totally see that happening. John says Suter's a great teammate. Also, yeah, you could see that. Yeah, you could you could definitely see. I know when we talked to Lucas Sims when he was on the show. You know, he was so excited. He said the first thing he did when the news broke was get Suter on the phone. And it was like, hello, teammate. He was excited to have him in the fold. I I, I think people love being around Suter. This team is full of character and full of leaders. This is going to be a thing. Like, if they get to where we think they can get, there's going to be so many fun stories from Charlie and from Gordon Whitmire and from C-Trent and all those guys that write about this team 
that they really do like an in-depth look at some different guys and how they are in the clubhouse because there's so many clubhouse guys. Does Gordon write fun stories? I'm, I'm, I think so. Uh, yeah. you, are you sure? I mean, I haven't read it yet, but yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, let's do this. We haven't talked about Nick Martinez either. And since he's going to pitch yep. on Sunday, uh, that'll be before we're back talking again. Uh, we'll obviously break down that start when we're back next week. But what are you looking for out of Nick Martinez? I, I just I don't want him to not go out there and try to over impress. I want yep. him to just go out there and kind of do his thing yep. and, and be what this team needs him to be, which is a good fifth starter ish. I know he's pitching third, but yeah. you know, along those lines, give me uh give, give us four or five, five innings, five innings. Don't walk a bunch of guys. Keep the scoreboard clean. No walks. I left. think that's great. No walks yesterday. Yeah. No walks yesterday for and, any Reds pitcher and, and be that guy, be that guy that can fill in in the rotation, be a long man in the bullpen. Just be good. I don't want him to go out there and try to over impress. I don't want no. him to over pitch. And I, I think he won't. I, he just give me ground balls for days. Like give me all the grounders. That is his MO is that he forces a lot of ground ball contact. And I think that the Reds can really feast on that. Just do whatever Montas did yesterday. Like the six innings and four strikeouts four hits and nothing else was a beautiful stat line. And I would love to see that from Nick Martinez as well. He's a guy too, that I, I kind of wonder how many starts we'll see from him in the rotation. I think that the way that this, this rotation is stacking up and where Nick Lodolo's timeline is, they will be able to move Nick Martinez into the bullpen mm -hmm. and replace him with Nick Lodolo. But Martinez is still going to get his starts because I think that's that's why the Reds, that's why David Bell left him in the rotation and is giving everybody that extra day arrest this first time through instead of just running with four guys because he's saying, yes, you're going to get your starts this year. We're not just going to stick you in the bullpen and, and make you a relief pitcher, but I don't see Nick Lodolo replacing anybody else whenever he comes back. Do you look into your crystal ball? Do you think that will be a one for one swap or will they restructure the rotation again? Does it matter who's pitching two, who's pitching three, who's pitching four? Or do you just pull out Martinez and drop Lodolo in? I think you just pull him out at that point because really the only time that the, the rotation order matters is when they reorder it for the postseason. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't see them. I don't see them reordering it and giving guys weird rest days because I was looking at the way that the schedule bends. And after these, you know, this off day, and then they go to Philadelphia for three, and then there's another off day next Thursday. After all of that, every single guy who goes through one through five is going to have six days of rest. Then once they restart that cycle, they're going to go back to five days. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that you're just going to go one for one. They're not going to reorder. All right, our buddy Jace checks in and says the vibes are immaculate, pals. Uh, are they not? There, it is. It is a fun time right now. You can't fully deliver on all the off-season hype in one game, but Red sure as hell tried. <laughs> they absolutely did. Absolutely. All right, guys, what else do we want to talk about? We got a few minutes here remaining. If you had something up above that I didn't catch because things were flying by pretty quick, mm. uh, put it in again. If there's something that you want to talk about, something that you want us to get to today. Uh, we'll do that before we get out of here. Uh, once again, uh, if you haven't done so yet, click that like button down below. It helps get this thing distributed. We want to get as many Reds fans in here as possible because that's really what it's all about. While you're looking at that, there was one thing I thought like with the Ford signing because I remember seeing the tweet yesterday about the Louisville Bats roster and the fact that all of the position players, and I'm glad that they signed Mike Ford for this reason, but all of the position players in Louisville other than Mike Ford have never seen major league bat at bats. Like mm -hmm. you go down the line, all of the guys that are in uh, Louisville to start the season outside of Mike Ford now uh, don't have major league experience. So your, your depth has been tested with these injuries and these suspensions. So now all of your experienced guys are in the majors and there's not really another guy to go to. I'm glad that they brought back Mike Ford. In defense of Stu for the season, Matt says, his load up on his swing was much better in the spring. Lower leg kick, hands were a bit lower, more direct to the ball. His eye is already solid, more contact coming. All right, that's good. Cool. Someone gave me a specific answer to what they see different. Um, I, I hope that that is how mm. it, plans, it, it plays out. I, I don't know that that's how it's going to, but I'm a... Uh, He's set up for success. He's got so much it, confidence. It, this is another him. guy that's yeah. going to get an opportunity now based on the injuries that not wouldn't necessarily. So I guess the real question is, what does he do with it, right? Like, 
Uh, Carrie asks if we're heading back to the ballpark. I definitely am there all weekend. Yes, um, I got a busy weekend with Easter going on. What? Why is opening day and the beginning of the season have to happen on Easter weekend? It's, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how I can get you out of some of this stuff. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll work on it. I'll have a talk with Hannah. <laughs> see if I can get you a permission slip to skip something. Yeah. We'll be, we'll, I'll definitely be back in the next homestand, though, for sure. A lot of great games. You know, brewers coming to town and all that stuff going on. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Kyle says, love that much like last year, it's the ones we didn't expect to produce who got it done yesterday, and it seemed like that was the theme all last year. There was a lot of that, and there, yeah. or there was guys that we expected to be something that became something sooner than we yeah. thought they were going to be. Um, you know, I don't know what you do. If, if this is how guys like Martini are going to play, When what do you do when everybody's healthy? It's going to be a great problem to have, but... And that's, I, I think that's a, an important thing too. Like throughout the course of 162 games, we're going to say this probably quite a bit, but we always say this, right? You win 50, you lose 50. It's what you do with the other 62. And this is one of those games that it feels like the other 62 because it was Nick Martini that led the charge. Like we expect it to be a game that Ellie takes over. We expect it to be a game that CES takes over. Jonathan India, Tyler Steven, those guys. Like when those guys work, that's supposed to happen. When it's Nick Martini that is going crazy, that's not a game that is supposed to happen. So if you if you don't win that game, that's one of your 62. So right now they are one and oh in a very, very good way. Chase checks in and says, not sure if we realized it since we were at the game, but he's saying that it was like the fifth or sixth inning before the outfield had a put out. Uh, excluding the well, the Jake Fraley, that the, Jesse the, Winker trying yeah, to stretch in. Excluding into that one, he talks about that. <laughs> so Fra that Frankie kept the ball on the ground. That's yeah, he was he kept the he kept the ball in on the ground, or if it was in the air, it, it was, was a short. weak pop yeah, up weak that contact. had no chance of doing anything. And uh, what about that for a second? The the Winker uh, getting thrown out on second base. Like, do you think for a minute he thought, all right, I'm going to show these guys I could have belonged here? Mm -hmm. And Jake Fraley was like, sit down, dude. <laughs> I just want to say to Kyle, Kyle Mitchell, I see you and you're hilarious. Uh, some of these I can't use uh, on the show, but I see you. You're funny. I like these comments. I appreciate you. If you want to know what I'm talking about, go get into the comment section. Uh, Kyle's on fire today. All right. Let's get a couple more in here uh, before we get out of here. Appreciate everybody hopping on this Friday morning. Maybe. Maybe. Might have to think about, although well, Hawaii time, it's a little bit early for you. A little bit more of a challenge. Yeah, yeah this would be, this. it's, it's, it's a good time. If I was in Hawaii right now, it would be like four in the morning. I yeah, don't yeah. know. I mean, I love doing this. I don't know if I love doing this that much. Yeah, I don't think you'd have two <laughs> eyes open at the same time. <laughs> All right. Uh, Kerry thinks the team seems to be picking up for the missing players. I I agree. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, next man up, right? Yep. That's that's what everybody always says. And you always get that coach speak. In every sport. I've never heard a sport that a coach didn't say that. Right. <laughs> For sure heard a golf coach say that one time, like in college. All right, gang. Is there anything we didn't get to that you want us to get to? Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up here in just a second. One last thing. If anybody's in the comments section and they got a chance to try that brisket hoagie, let me know. Because I was not trying to get in that line. I was not trying to get in any line. <laughs> the bathroom line. All right. And Man. that's the first time I've ever been in a bathroom line that I was like, you know what? I need to get a beverage to hold me over while I wait in the line. Like, this is a long line. Uh, let's get this from Matthew. Uh, why no game today? Seems a bit odd. This is always how they do the schedule uh, in some of the eastern cities for opening day or the cities that Northern don't have cities, a roof. Yeah. Uh, they allow for a rainout. Uh, we saw that. A couple teams were rained out yesterday. Mets Brewers got rained out. Opening day and... today. It's just I, – I like that they build that in uh, when there's bad weather, which – you know, there has been in the no. past, um, but today it sucks <laughs> because yeah. I would really like to be heading down to the ballpark here uh, to watch some more baseball action. It was so good to be back in baseball and, mm. and the weather yesterday. I mean, Perfect. okay, look, I'm not as winterized as I used to be. And, and you're, you're laughing because I was cold all day, Yes, you were. Um, but it, it really was great weather. Uh, yeah. The sun was shining for the most part. Uh, you know, it was a little chilly for me because I'm not used to it anymore, but um, I really had a, I was not ever really uncomfortable. It, no. it was just a great time out there. It was a perfect day. And I mean, walking around kept you warm enough. And yeah, it was, uh, that was something that I think I saw in the weather report like two weeks ago. 
And I saw it, and I didn't say it out loud because I'm like, sure enough, you tell somebody, man, the weather report looks good for opening day, then it would have snowed. So I was like, nope, got to keep that in. Got to keep that in. Don't want to jinx it. Kyle, I can use this one. It says, go buy some Cincy shirts. He sees Jeff rock them. I have them too. I wear the Mighty Mac all the time and uh, the Macho Man Randy Savage. And I, I've got several. In fact, maybe we will. After yeah, we get out of here. Maybe stop yeah. on the way out of town. We'll go. Get them. To... Love Cincy shirts, guys. I mean, it, hey, if you guys want to advertise on the show, by the way, um, we talk about you enough. Maybe we could work something out. Yeah. Um, I love Cincy shirts. If you if you haven't been down there, um, go down there because they'll make mm. you a shirt on the fly if they don't have the one you want. Like yeah. it's 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 great. Love Cincy shirts. Um, anybody have a review of the Skyline Nachos food? Oh man, I was trying it's to see if anybody got that, but I didn't know anybody. I, none of our none of our group of season ticket holders got that. So. No, and it was it was really impossible. Um, I have come to the conclusion that. With the Reds being good, the ballpark is going to be packed, yep. and we're going to have to adjust our routine accordingly because the concession lines, the bathroom lines, the lines just aren't great. Um, now, unless you wanted to miss like an, like two innings waiting in line for concessions, that was just not going to happen. Although there were there was one case where I saw an open one and I, I ran up and got a broad. But yeah. <laughs> All right, gang, I think that is going to be a good spot for us to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, appreciate you guys being here on a Friday morning. Uh, baseball is back, baby. Yeah. We are excited. We are pumped up. We're going to be with you all season long, every step of the way. We're going to be gathering up all of the news, the transactions. We're going to be breaking down things. We're going to be back in your feeds on Monday unless something huge happens this weekend. With me in town, maybe we jump on for – a special yeah. weekend. It might happen. I don't know. Um, we will see. But we'll be back in your feeds on Monday. We're going to be covering you the Reds five days a week for you. Uh, we're going to be uh, looking forward to talking baseball with you. And again, I'm at the ballpark all weekend. If you see me, come say hi. Come talk baseball. I want to talk baseball with you. And on that, Jeff, get us out of here. That'll do it for us here today. Make sure you subscribe because we are locked on Reds every single day. I had to take that comment off. Still up there. Oh.